Good weather isn't the only thing some of us need to enjoy a walk outside. For those who use canes, wheelchairs, or strollers, the activity can simply be dangerous. I got the chance to meet a man whose sidewalk repair hunters group is working to change that. For many, it's just the bumpy path beneath their feet. For wheelchair users, those bumps can stop them in their tracks. That's what happened to Michael Sack in South Minneapolis. He uses his voice device to explain. I reported the sidewalk through the Minneapolis website to no avail. At the end of May 2021, I emailed my former city council member Jeremy Schroeder about fixing it. Within three weeks, it was fixed. He decided every sidewalk needs to be fixed in a timely fashion. One year ago, he started Minneapolis Sidewalk Repair Hunters. People report inaccessible sidewalks, and he makes a formal report to the city. I mean, that's crazy. That's a lot of problem areas. Okay. You can see there have been dozens of reports. One of Michael's biggest pushes is he wants to replace curbs that look like this to curbs that look like that. The befores and after show he's getting results, getting the city to quickly patch with asphalt while awaiting bigger repairs. In all, he's had 48 reports and already 29 have been fixed. People don't think of too much until it, you know, gets fixed and they think, oh wow, this is, it makes a difference. So and that's thanks to my brother. So he's doing good work, I'd say. I'd say so too. I mean, before we know it, it's going to be smooth on all these sidewalks, right? <laughs> you can find a public tennis court at parks all over Minneapolis, but equipment to play the game it isn't as easy to come by. That's why there is now an initiative to make sure that the sport is accessible to all people. Jennifer Merrily learned more about the Court Cubby pilot program and how it's hoping to grow even bigger. When you open it up, there's typically a little bit more rackets in there, but they're being used right now. We have all different sizes. This is the court cubby, an idea Maya Dennis has started after yeah. doing some research oh. about barriers to the game. Oh USDA Northern wanted to create more access. Really, anybody that wants to can come up, open it up, grab a racket, try it out. If they like the racket, they can even keep it. Um, we're open to that. We just really want to get rackets in hands and have people playing. Modeled after the Little Free Library, there are rackets and balls inside. The locker at Weber Park is kept open. It was added to the courts in partnership with the Camden Town Tennis Club. It means these kids get to experience the joy that tennis brings. Houston White is the co-founder. A busy, vibrant, fun, energetic, joyous community is a safe community. You know, when kids have things that they're working towards, they're working towards their backhand or their forehand, and it keeps them busy. Nine-year-old Trinity Schumacher tried out one of the rackets. Tennis makes me feel really comfortable about, like, moving my body and hitting certain hits. Her mom thinks it will make a difference here. When I was young, we didn't have stuff like this. So for people to have this now, like, at arm's reach, it's really nice. Trinity encourages others to use the court cubby to give tennis a try. No money, no anything. You just grab a tennis racket and start playing tennis with your friends, your mom, your dad. There's another court cubby at Cardi Park in St. Paul, and they hope to add more of these around the Twin Cities. In Minneapolis, Jennifer Merrily, WCCO 4 News. A special after school program says if she can run a mile, she can run the world. Girls on the Run gets kids active and teaches them crucial life skills. And right now, they could use some help. David Schumann shows us how kids are taught to create their own course. They're not technically training yet. But when fifth grade starts in the fall, Colette Uran will begin preparing for her fifth 5K race through Girls on the Run, Minnesota. My mom has coached me for a long time. That would be Mary Uran, the nonprofit's executive director. The after school program gets third through eighth grade girls running and active and also equipped with important skills for growing up like managing emotions, power and agency, setting boundaries, things that girls can use as they rise through middle school and into high school. If um, you're being um, bullied or anything, it just like helps to like just stop and calm down and just helps with like your 
positive self-talk and just able to recognize your emotions. With 2,000 girls enrolled this fall at 150 sites around the state, the volunteer coaches are the lifeblood of the program. And it's such an important thing to provide role models that are outside of your own caregivers to girls at this age. Any adult can coach, no running expertise needed. All the training and materials for the curriculum are provided, but arguably the most important thing a volunteer can bring to the table is their own lived experience. You're just bringing your best self. And Mary says if running isn't for your child, cartwheels work just as well. The only pace that needs to be kept is forward. In St. Paul, David Schumann, WCCO 4 News. When we come back, some new neighbors arrive in Maplewood, but they're probably not who you're expecting. We're going to tell you why the new residents are serving is a big help to you.